Okay, thank you. Okay. Very, very warm welcome to the Hungaro Ring, where you join us on a special day for the International GT Open as we celebrate the 100th race for the championship. And let's start with a lap of the Hungaro Ring in car with Federico Leo. Here in the contra box, it's myself and Evans alongside me, the sports car and GT racer Tommy Erdos. And Tommy, you've raced here in sports prototypes. It's a tricky circuit for these drivers. It sure is, very busy, and uh, the drivers will be very hot inside the cockpit. Hungara ring circuit as the cars are assembling on the grid for the second race of the weekend. This is the slightly shorter 50 minute race. And if you didn't join us yesterday, well, you missed an absolutely wonderful race that was won in the event by Miguel Ramos and Rafael Giamria. Starting from pole positions, the car that finished fourth, having lost third on the final lap of the race. That's Matteo Malicelli and Alvaro Barber. It's Malicelli who qualified the Veloce Aston Martin in pole position by just over a tenth of a second from Emanuele Moncini, who lines up in the Corvette alongside him on the front row, as it was, yes, it was the other Corvette in the race, Ramos and Gian Rea, who claimed victory, but it's Moncini who prevailed in qualifying yesterday, which gave us the grid for today's race. Third on the grid is the driver who finished as runner-up yesterday, Federico Leo, having spent best part of 16 minutes trying to fight his way past Miguel Ramos. He couldn't quite do it, but he and Jimmy Bruni in that air course, Ferrari 4th of 8, you would expect to be one of the front-running drivers in today's race. Well, as ever in the GT Open, there are two classes. There is the Super GT class, which is for cars that run to GT Open specific GT2 Open specification. 
and Juan Manuel Lopez is one of those drivers in the Super GT class heat and Emmanuel and Andrea Montermini line up in fourth position and then the GTS class which is for cars that are broadly speaking running to GT3 specification as the countdown continues here on the grid here is the championship leading car of Marco Hosa and Nick Tandy the Manti Racing Porsche it leads the championship by just three points from Federico Leo and Jimmy Bruni and then the pole sitting car Alvaro Barbara and Matteo Malicelli they are third in the championship by just six points back from them so there is everything to race for with just five races remaining in this year's international GT Open here is the leading GTS car and it is a very welcome addition to the grid this weekend it's the Schubert Motorsport BMW and Daniel Ruse has been in very very fine form over the course of the weekend he didn't make it to the finish yesterday having got got tangled up with another car but i think we can expect to see daniel fighting towards the head of the field in the early stages it's a very very warm day here in hungary 28 degrees ambient temperature the track temperature a little bit higher at 35 degrees and although by gt terms tommy 50 minutes is not as long a race as some of these drivers be used to it's still going to be hard work for them around the hungaro ring Absolutely a very tight and twisty uh, circuit here. The drivers will be working very hard inside their cars. It is a hot day and they will be feeling the heat today, especially the tyres. The tyres will take a beating in this heat. 35 degree of track temperature is high enough to uh, make those tyres deteriorate faster than, uh, let's say, obviously normal conditions. Yes. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see how they get on with that. Yes, if you've not seen the Essential GT Open before, just to explain them, alongside those two classes, all the cars run on a control Dunlop tyre, and it's the same compound available of all the teams as we take a look at the starting grid. So it is Matteo Malicelli, Manuel Moncini, the front row, Federico Leo, and Juan Manuel Lopez, Ferrari, row two, Nick Tandy, and Daniel Roos complete the third row. Then Lorenzo Bentempelli, Alexander Talkanitsa Jr., row four, brilliant qualifying from Talkanitsa to line up in eighth. Then Marco Mapelli. And yesterday's race winner, Miguel Ramos, complete row five with Stefano Cattuso, the reigning GTS champion, Matteo Bretta, rounding out row six of the grid. Andrea Rizzoli, who claimed GTS honors in yesterday's race, and Michael Dallastella comprised row seven. And then a long, long way down, 15th and 16th, for Michael Brosnitsky and Ramon Narak, two of the Super GT cars that have been right at the front of the field throughout much of the season. So I'll be looking with interest to see how they progress up through the order later on it is martin lanting in the ferrari 458 which completes the field they all must make a mandatory pit stop midway through the race between 40 percent and 60 percent race distance that means between 30 between 20 and 30 minutes of the race elapsed time and in the gt open the way that performance is balanced out is the addition of additional time to the minimum pit stop time which today is 65 seconds from pit entry to pit exit but then carrying an extra 30 seconds in the pit, so a 95 second minimum pit stop time for Federico Leo and Jimmy Bruni. It's an extra 20 seconds in the pits for Miguel Ramos and Rafael Giambria, so they must be stuck in the pits for 85 seconds, and then it's 15 seconds additional time for Marco Holzer and Nick Tandy. It's 80 seconds in the pits for them, so those cars will be looking to place themselves as high up the order as possible in these early stages so that they don't suffer too badly during the pit stops and this really has worked very very well as a way of equalizing performance allow allowing the cars to run unrestricted but also ensuring that, that no one car and driver combination can become too dominant what that really means though is that for the fourth place car yesterday Alvaro Barbara and Matteo Malicelli the pole sitting Aston Martin this gives them Tommy every opportunity to come through and claim victory absolutely I think uh, they, they're looking uh, forward to this race very much so uh, and they have a great opportunity obviously for pole position uh, very well balanced uh, drives as well they both uh, drive at very similar pace uh, incidentally I was talking to Ron Ramos uh, earlier today in the paddock uh, and congratulating him for the uh, fantastic performance of yesterday's race uh, and he actually told me that uh, they hadn't changed tyres uh, in pit stop and uh, Ramos says that Leo's car did change tyres so it gives you know the, the performance of Ramos an even more impressive one it really does as Alvaro Barber who will be taking over the Veloys Aston Martin the pole sitting car later in the race watches on in the garage we're ready for the rolling start as the pace car peels in they form up side by side in the hundredth race of the international GT Open is go as they charge away down towards the first corner it's the Aston Martin to the inside of the road the all black car has got the advantage Federico Leo trying to squeeze the inside of Emanuele Moncini as they all fan out for position and it's going to be very very close Daniel Roos possibly got tagged in the BMW running wide is Malicelli Leo moves up to the end of the field we've also got on the Auto Orlando Sport 
Porsches trying to gain ground. That will be Marco Mapelli as they arrive into turn two. And Leo tries around the outside to wrestle the lead away from Malicelli. Is he able to do it? He's got the inside line for turn three. But Malicelli still keeps side by side with him as they all run out wide over turn three on towards the fast left-hander at turn four. They're still side by side. But it's finally the pole system, Matteo Malicelli, who leads the race. Second place, Federico Lea in the Ferrari. Third place, Emanuele Moncini in the bright yellow Corvette. And then it's the Porsche of Nick Tandy in fifth. Juan Manuel Lopez in the white Ferrari lies in sixth as they come through the first sector and into this very tricky middle phase of the lap through the chicane that turns six and seven. And already Federico Lea blown for the tail of the Aston Martin. Very, very brave start from him also got a good amount of change up in the GTS class between the Porto Orlando Porsche and also Stefano Gattuso in the Kessel Racing Ferrari 458 as the race leaders head on to this back straight for the first time it is Marco Mapelli in the Porsche who leads the GTS class then on to turn 12 and now Malicelli has got the advantage so he's going to try and pull away from Federico Leo yes, for Leo, but nice to see Leo, you know, focusing his frustrations perhaps from yesterday, following the Rambos car, into a very solid start, it was very racy at the beginning there, so uh, good for Leo to be focused on his start and uh, make a strong second at the stage. Saw a slight error there from Mario Edimoncini in the Corvette through that penultimate turn, and that enabled Nick Tandy to get up onto his tail, but the Porsche has been struggling a little bit for straight line speed all weekend, but he sits in the slipstream behind the Corvette, he jinks to the inside, he's having a, a sniff towards turn one, but he can't quite make that move, so they all arrive on mass into first corner. There's Mingo Ramos trying to gain ground on Michael Brosnitsky also. Andrea Rizzoli pressurises Ram on the rack in the Porsche as they exit the first turn, and Malicelli trying to extend an advantage ahead of the field. The rest of them all jostling for position. Daniel Roos in the BMW had a, a wretched start. He's dropped 10 places down into 16th, so he's got work to do in the Schumann Motorsport car. As Malicelli attempts to pull away from Federico Leo Moncini runs off and wide through turn four. He's going to lose several positions as a result of that. He certainly loses two slots. He rejoins in fifth, having been demoted by Nick Tandy and Juan Manuel Lopez. He's got Marco Mapelli right in his tail. And that Corvette, Tommy, has, has looked a little bit unwieldy through the first lap and a half. Yeah, so obviously I'm not sure there was a contact. Uh, I think a position there was a contact, but here we go to replay for lap uh, one, turn one. Look at Leo, very racing. In fact, touching Malicelli out of turn four. But uh, yes, the, the Corvette there, uh, luckily he got back on the track, and here we see number 58. It's Martin Lanting, not, who very not, nearly had an expensive moment. Yes, not quite making contact with the barrier there. Hopefully he will uh, get back on. Unfortunately, Lanting hasn't come through to complete the first lap, so his race may have been very brief indeed. And now that Nick Tandy's up into third position, he's released Helen Moncini, he's already beginning to try and close in onto the tail of Federico Leo, Nick Tandy was one of the stars of the first race of the weekend yesterday and he closes in on Leo as Emanuele Moncini has got his hands full with that Corvette he's now got Marco Mapelli in the Auto Orlando Sport Porsche the blue and white car the leading car in the GTS cars closing up onto his turn also Stefano Cattuso who we haven't seen enough of this season right there on his tail then Lorenzo Bontempelli in the blue Ombra racing car here is Michael Brosnitsky he's having a good tussle with Miguel Ramos, and Ramos tries to draw alongside the Ferrari as they come out of turn one, accelerating towards turn two, it's Ramos to the outside, the car with its lights ablaze in the Corvette, and around he goes, but he misses his braking point by quite some margin, he's going to rejoin, oh, he spins into the face of the oncoming traffic, and how was he avoided by Andrea Rizzoli, he's very, very lucky not to have been collected, he rejoins now at the tail of the field, just up behind Freddy Kramer, but very disappointing start to the race for yesterday's winner. Yes, a very different race for Ramos today, obviously starting from 10th position on the grid. He had a lot to make up. He was making good uh, ground there and uh, tried to move on the outside, ran onto the uh, part of the track where it's very, uh, very sandy and obviously no grip. And unfortunately made a mistake there. So he's got a lot to make up at this stage. Federico Leo has really closed back onto the tail of Malicelli. And Teo Malicelli is not running away with this just at the moment. And Nick Tandy is staying very close to the leader's tail as well. So the first three cars come by just one and a half seconds at the end of lap two. They're coming towards the latter stages of lap three. Here is the battle for GTS honors. We take another look at this incident for Miguel Ramos. He runs wide, but then maybe just a little bit too enthusiastic to get back on track. And oof, 
Andrea Rizzoli's blood pressure will have hit an all-time high with that. Yeah, certainly his heart rate would have gone up uh, severely there. But uh, yes, uh, Ramos obviously went wide and uh, quilted his tires full of sand and uh, obviously had no grip and uh, tried to keep the momentum so not to lose so many uh, positions. But uh, he just was too optimistic there and uh, obviously lost control of the car. Now, incidentally, Leo is uh, doing a great job, but he knows that he needs to push very hard because he cannot afford Monticelli to go away. They, they're giving away 20 seconds in the pits later on, so it's very important for Leo to stay in touch. Exactly, and that Federico Leo gives all the work for his co-driver, Jimmy Bruni, to undertake. Here is the battle then for the GTS class leads being led by this car, the 54 car of Marco Mapelli and Stefano Gattuso, then the black Ferrari. Kessel Racing Car Artists Hill, then it's the Ombra Racing Car of Lorenzo Bontempelli. And Bontempelli, a solo driver this weekend, so he was unfortunately an early retirement from yesterday's race, but he was running in both positions at the point he dropped out of the race, so he would look to be uh, trying to claim a podium from today's race. He's on the tail of Gattuso, but Gattuso is a very, very quick driver. Indeed, wonderful to see the two Ferraris engaged in battle. They, they don't want the Auto Orlando reporter and Marco Mapelli to run off into the distance then is Alexander Talcon it's a junior for the second of the Auto Orlando Sport Porsches that's Matteo Beretta the former F3 driver making the step up to the International GT Open and he is running very well indeed so there is Bontempelli who uh, you fellow endurance racing had a massive accident at the Spa 24 hours during the summer break for the International GT Open rolling the car at Longchamp I think it was was a little bit battered and bruised from that, but he's back this weekend and putting together probably one of his strongest performances of the year. Yeah, that's very good for him. Just looking at uh, the Paddy's car, they're bouncing quite a lot at the front end, but, uh, and it's, uh, it's part of a soft now, so the car looks very soft and sprung at the moment. Maybe that's what they need to do to find front end grip, but it's certainly uh, not enjoying the bounce around the Hungara ring. We watch the front end of the Paddy's car. Be a slightly uncomfortable ride for Marco Mapelli, but the Auto Orlando sporting one of the most professional teams in international GT and sports car racing. Uh, they're not at all showy, they're not glossy, but every penny that team has goes into the performance of the car. The three leaders, though, still running very closely together, but you'd have to say, as we're only 12 minutes away from the pit window open, that this really plays into the hands of the Aston Martin because they do not have the additional time to spend in the pits, unlike the two cars chasing them. So for Matteo Malicelli, in front it's where he wants to be uh, particularly with the Aston Martin they've been concerned about tyre wear around the track but they've, they've had a, a real straight line speed advantage this weekend it's one of the beauties of multi-mark GT racing that on some parts of the circuit one car is much stronger for example the Porsche is very very good through this second sector of the lap Tommy but then along the start and finish straight that's where the Aston Martin really comes to its fall absolutely that's the uh, that's what came out of uh, yesterday's race and for sure the same is happening again Malicelli doing a fantastic job at the front controlling the start of the race as he should have done and uh, now pulling away slightly Leo is still there but uh, as you say they've got 20 seconds in the back in the pits and that's a massive advantage Nick Tandy in the Porsche looking very good again and uh, making some good moves. He's, uh, he was very racy yesterday. To me, the race of the, uh, the, sorry, the move of the race yesterday from Nick Tandy in the Essence on the last lap. And uh, he's obviously walking up today feeling the same way. He's uh, done some quite good moves at the beginning of the race. He's now like Derby, running very strong. The other car that is still in very close attention is Juan Manuel Lopez. He will pass over to the former Formula 1 driver Andrea Montoni midway through the race. And chasing down Alvaro Bar, well, that is a mouth-watering prospect as Federico Leo flashes his light to Matteo Malicelli and well Malicelli's going to be wise to that one I don't think he's going to promptly move aside likewise lights a blaze for Marco Mopelli and that car really is riding the bumps it's uh, quite visibly bouncing on the suspension as we see a challenge Daniel Ruse to the inside of Andrea Rizzoli he couldn't quite do it but then Rizzoli very slow through turn one, it brings Michael Dallas, still the third of the cars in that queue. So it's Ruse in the BMW, sandwiched by the two red Ferraris. Rizzoli, the first of those. Dallas, Stella, the second. Arriving into turn two, they're chasing down Ramon the Rack as well in the Imps Performance Matt at Porsche. And so this is the fight for 13th, 14th, and 15th. Daniel Roos, after that disappointing start, looking to gain ground. The, the Schubert BMW, that car, immaculately prepared. Run as really are all of the cars in this championship, but it's a welcome addition to the championship this weekend and has 
the leaders amongst the pigeons somewhat. In the GTS classes, he looks the inside of Rizzoli into the chicane at six and seven. He wasn't quite close enough, but Rizzoli riding the curbs. This is not what Andrea Rizzoli wants to be doing at this stage of the race. And likewise, Matteo Malicelli has not got a comfortable advantage here. He's got Leo and Tandy right on his tail. But the problem Federico Leo's got, which is exactly the problem he had in race one, is he's probably got the pace to pull away from the Aston Martin if he gets past it. But finding a way through is very, very tricky. Yes, it will be, of course, the Aston Martin with the advantage on the straight, as we uh, mentioned earlier. And here we see again the uh, Daniel Roos uh, BMW doing very well. I mean, obviously, he qualified Lars, his teammate qualified somewhere at the back of the grid, and Daniel's got a lot of work to do, and, but he's doing very well. A lot of pace in that car, really strong choice from Schubert Motorsport and the uh, Z4. Incidentally, the Maserati MC3 didn't start the race today. I was talking to Gabriel Gardel earlier in the paddock. Unfortunately, they have a drivetrain issue, and uh, it's back to the workshop for some re-engineering on the, on the drivetrain before they can go out again. They, they were complaining of a lot of vibration in the car, and it was getting very difficult to, uh, you know, to race. It became a safety issue, so quite rightly, they packed up today. But they will be back very strong in London. Looking forward to seeing more of the Maserati as Daniel Ruiz is all over the tail of Andrea Rizzoli as they come out to turn one, then Rizzoli squeezes Ruiz towards the grass, so he looks to the outside, and Andrea Rizzoli putting together a very robust defensive drive here. Michael Dallastella perfectly poised to pounce, and there'll be uh, some anxiety on the Kessel Racing people who we saw a glimpse of moments ago as flashing his lights as well is Daniel Roos trying to let Rizzoli know that he's a little bit quicker and wants to come through. But these 50-minute races for these drivers, that this is essentially a sprint race and they're not going in a 24-hour race. You might see a driver moving aside, maybe letting a car that's a little bit quicker through. In this, absolutely none of that. And Roos is going to have to fight his way past Rizzoli and he goes for a move up the inside into turn six. And then through turn seven, through he goes. Beautifully judged move on the inside. Rizzoli does very well to maintain his position as well in 14. So now that Roos is through, he chases off in pursuit of Real Mondrak and Michael Dallastella sets about elevating himself past Andrea Rizzoli. Yes, once again, a very well-measured move there from uh, from Roos, coming out of turn five, which we pointed out before. It is the classic overtake move here at the Hungary ring, focusing on your exit turn five, and you can go on inside for the chicane. So now the BMW chasing down the Porsche of Real Mondrak and Michael Brosnitsky in the Kessel Racing Ferrari. That's the yellow and black car. Isn't too far off into this distance either. Right, let's have another look at it. And Roos had to be absolutely committed to that manoeuvre. Yeah, Roos, uh, you know, pulled alongside the Ferrari quite cleanly, so the Ferrari had nowhere to go but to, had to uh, give the position. Just a classic, uh, perfectly executed manoeuvre. Really was. So, another lap. Reeled off. It's still Matteo Malicelli who leads the race by just over a second from Federico Leo. And then Nick Tandy in third. Are we going to see the challenge from Michael Dallastella and Andrea Rizzoli? Dallastella breaks very, very late and deep into turn one. Will he get the car stopped in time? He does just look for a moment as if he was at a risk of maybe tagging the rear of Daniel Roos's car, but he, he was able to judge that braking distance perfectly. But Rizzoli immediately looks to fight back to the inside, and Dallastella closes the door very late on him. It's wonderful to see these cars going wheel to wheel. Assertive driving again from Michael Dallastella, so he gains the place, moves up in 214. Yes, Rizzoli, to be honest, missed an opportunity there into turn one because, I mean, good move from Dallastelli, but he was deep into turn one on the inside. If Rizzoli had just stayed outside, he could have used the cutback to then retake that position, but uh, he didn't read that very well, and uh, he's now behind him. Don't know where to look for the battles here. This is the fight for the GTS class lead, and it is still being led just by Marco Mapelli, although by a very slender margin from Stefano Gattuso who is right on his tail. The problem that Mapelli's got is that he has got an additional 25 seconds in the pits, as opposed to Gattuso, who will just be in for the mandatory minimum 65 seconds. So that is going to be difficult for Mapelli. And also Lorenzo bontempelli has got no additional pit stop penalty. But Marco Mapelli has a very rapid co drive to hand over to in the form of Archie Hamilton. Lorenzo bontempelli we know, is going through this race single-handedly. And... Uh, it's Marco Zanatini who takes over from Stefano Gattuso. So we're just five minutes away from the big window opening. And as we have got for the lead the race overall, it's a three-way fight for the GTS class. Well, Daniel Roos is already up ahead of Ram on the rack, so Roos has gained another place in the BMW and now the rack under real pressure from Michael Dallastella as they accelerate along the start and finish straight. Are we going to see the Ferrari looking to try and gain that position? No, we're not. But this has been a um, a strange the old song weekend for the Ibs performance map at Porsche at Ram on the Rack and Patrick Pile because 
they are two very quick drivers. It's a, it's a very professional team, that one. And to see them languishing outside the top 10 is, is somewhat strange. Uh, I must say, as, as you know, my first uh, first visit to GT, GT Open this weekend, I was uh, expecting the IMSA uh, car to be uh, further ahead. And Pile, a very experienced driver, the team, uh, and a previous Le Mans winner. And uh, so, yeah, uh, not really performing uh, uh, to the, uh, the standards that we were expecting them to do. But uh, maybe there's an issue, we don't know. And uh, let's uh, you know, see, we'll find out what's happened uh, with them perhaps after the race to see if there's anything that we should, should know that, uh, to contribute to that, that performance today. That said, we often see Patrick Pile coming up the field very strongly in the latter stages, so we shouldn't discount that car altogether just yet as the GTS battle continues. Somewhat ferocious, these the two Italian drivers, Marco Mapelli and Stefano Gattuso, who are very, very close to each other, barely a car's length between them. We go back to the battle between Alexander Taukonitsa and Matteo Beretta for ninth and tenth in the race. And Gattuso is very, very keen to show just why he's been such a star driver in this championship in the past and would like to move into the lead of the GTS class by the end of his stint as they come out of the final turn. This is to complete lap nine of the race. It is still, though, Marco Mapelli who leads the GTS class. Then it's that black number 77 car, the Kessel Racing car of Stefano Cattuso and the Ombra racing car of Lorenzo Bontempelli in very close attendance as well. Bontempelli should never be discounted. Really does look a menacing car, that, doesn't it, the, the Cattuso machine? But Mapelli, he doesn't seem to be phased by the pressure. He's just running his own race, sticking to the racing line and making it very difficult for Cattuso. Yeah, it's a great-looking car. The, all the 458s, I, I think they are probably one of the nicest Ferraris, I think, ever. Great on track. But uh, yes, it's a great, great to see the uh, GTS battle as well, potting up. The first three very close together. And uh, still, you know, that Porsche doesn't look comfortable on the track, does it? This bounces around quite a bit. But uh, maybe that's effective. That's the way they get front-end grip. Uh, but uh, compared to the other cars, it's certainly a lot more And we've seen the switch. Andrea Rizzoli has moved back ahead of Michael Dallastella. We didn't see what happened here. It was into turn two. And Rizzoli taking big risks. Two wheels on the grass. Dallas Stella tries to fight back. Rooster tails the rear of the car. And that is into team driver. It's very best. It's the A, of course. Ferrari from Andrea Rizzoli ahead of the Kessel Racing Ferrari of Michael Dallas Stella. And Dallas Stella hands over mid race to the incredibly rapid Daniel Zampieri. You think that car's spectacular now with Zampieri behind the wheel? And it promises to be something else. Michael Prosnitsky having a, a tough run here in the Kessel Racing Friday in the Super GT class. He's got Ramon Narak onto his tail. So we've got these four cars still fighting tooth and nail. And with the pit window opening at the end of the next lap, I wonder if any of these cars will be called in fairly early to get them out of this fight. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if, if the cars are clearly faster than the car in front, they, you know, the team managers should be on the radio and uh, get them in, in the box a little bit earlier, try and get out of this, this position. That's, that would be the small thing to do for sure. Well, here they come then onto the start and finish straight. Who is going to have the run? The Ferraris have been formidable all weekend in a straight line. But I don't think Rizzoli's going to be quite close enough to the rack. Instead, it's Dallas Stella who just shows himself in Rizzoli's mirrors. Rizzoli, in turn, did think about trying to move around the outside of the Porsche. It's going to be very congested as they arrive into turn two. And are we going to see any challenges being mounted? No, we're not but very late on the brakes. Is Andrea Rizzoli again trying to find a way? past the Porsche Ram and the Rack, and the Rack in turn is being held up a little bit by Michael Brosnitsky, and that's why Brosnitsky is part of the battle. Daniel Roos moves past him, Brosnitsky ran wide, and back into the clutches of Narak. Yeah, Roos putting in some good times now. He's got some clear uh, road ahead of him. be interesting to see what lap times uh, Daniel Roos come up with. And around the outside at turn five, we see the challenge for Andrea Rizzoli on that round on the Rack. He couldn't quite do it. He now jinxes the inside, looks for the braking line into turn six. Oh, that's going to be very, very tight. Rizzoli, though able to maintain his position, he launched uh, that challenge on the rack. It gave Michael Dallastella the hint of an opening to try around the outside. That was very brave from Rizzoli. He clearly feels he's a lot faster than the Porsche through some of these slower turns. He's just trying to find the opportune moment to outbreak the rack into one of these technical corners through sector two. So out of turn 11, along this short back stretch into turn 12, they come, and Dallas Stella now attempts to pass Rizzoli. He 
looks to the inside of Rizzoli. He's going to be frustrated here. He wants to get past Ram on the rack. He doesn't be battling with Michael Dallastella as the pit window is open. All the cars must come in for a mandatory minimum of 65 seconds. And then those with the bonus time also in as all four of them come into the pit. So clearly all the teams thought, Tommy, we've got to pull them out of this battle. So they all come in together. As the rack was trying to make the move on Brozanitsky, ran wide and very nearly lost the place to Rizzoli, who looked around the outside at turn five. They all come into the pit lane past their country box, running absolutely together. So here are the driver changes. Philip Petter clambers in to the wheel of the number 11 car. Daniel Zampieri at the back of the shot takes over from Michael Dallastella, then the blue, red and white Porsche of Ram and Rackets. Now Patrick Pile, the Porsche works driver, who assumes the reins of that car. So we can expect to see him fly. As still this fight for GTS honours, Stefano Cattuso will stay out as deep into his stint as possible. Marco Mapelli, of course, has got that additional 25 seconds in the pits, opposed to the two cars that he's racing with. So he will leave his co-driver, Archie Hamilton, with a lot to do in the second half of the race. Lorenzo Bontempelli, well, he's in for the long haul. He is doing the full 50 minutes, and that leaves Lorenzo very well positioned for potentially claiming GTS class honours here because the co-driver for... Stefano Cattuso is Marco Zanatini, and Zanatini not really quite on Cattuso's pace. Cattuso breaking very deep into turn 13. Are we going to see any of them into the pits on this occasion? No, we're not. I think they're enjoying themselves too much. As now Federico Leo comes in, that is to hand over to Jimmy Bruni, but it is going to be 30 seconds more in the pits for Leo and Bruni, as opposed to the car coming in behind them. That's Juan Manuel Lopez and Andrea Montermini. And this gives Montermini a, a very, very good chance of potentially coming through and claiming his third victory of the season. Well, Montermini has a good chance here for sure and uh, is well placed. But uh, don't discount Jimmy Bruni. I know they have an awful you know, gap there for the 30 seconds uh, handicap, but uh, he's a class driver and uh, you never know what's going to happen at the front. Well, pit stop has already been... No, it's not. That's uh, the cars that have emerged from the pits and lapped down on Nick Tandy. So the battle between Zampieri and now Stefano Bizzari has fed out in the middle of the battle between Nick Tandy and Emanuele Moncini. These cars all a little bit out of sequence. Uh, Zampieri and Bizzari, that's going to be a fight to relish over the second half of the race. And both Zampieri and Bizzari also fancy their chances of getting themselves up onto the GTS class podium for Manuel Moncini. He's trying to effectively lap these cars and they're not making it particularly easy for him at the moment. As here is the race leader still, Matteo Malicelli. He is yet to make his pit stop, but he's coming towards the end of the lap. So in second place now, we've got Nick Tandy. And then up into third, Emanuele Moncini, who is trying to make that move on Bizzari. And Bizzari moves across in front of the Corvette. And Moncini is finally able to put the lap on Stefano Bizzari. Peel into the pits this time round in the Corvette. Now he's going on for another lap as Gattuso attempted the move on Marco Mapelli. Mapelli pushed into the gravel trap. Oh, that's going to be so frustrating for him. There was a, a bit of a forced move there from Gattuso. I'm not sure. I didn't see the beginning of that move, so uh, I don't want to say too much at this stage. But it looked like a, you know, it wasn't certainly wasn't a clean one. We'll see what happens if we get a replay. Into the pits then is the Manti Racing Porsche, the championship leading car. It's Marco Holzer who takes over from Nick Tandy. Also Lorenzo Montempelli into the pits. So now that Jimmy Bruni is out on track, he is going to be pushing very, very hard. The ex Minardi Formula One driver and really within the paddock even, the respect for Jimmy Bruni is absolutely astonishing. There's a general recognition that if you want a Ferrari GT car driven to its fullest potential, Jimmy Bruni is the, the man to hand that car to. Absolutely, Jimmy's uh, proven himself over several years now driving Ferraris, and uh, uh, that's really, I mean, I know he's driven Formula One many years ago, but uh, I think that's really what he's famous for, is his, uh, his fantastic performances in the Ferrari. And uh, I've no doubt he's going to uh, put on an excellent display now that he's in the car and uh, we'll see uh, how far up the grid he can get. So the pit's very, very busy. It's a short interchange period. There is the motor of Rafael Unzer and Zagren waiting in front of that car with his red and yellow helmet is Alvaro Barber, who will be taking over this race leading car that has been leading since the start of the race. Number 12, Matteo Malicelli. 
the Villois Aston Martin. We have not unsurprisingly got the team manager of Stefano Gattuso summoned to race control. So will we see Malicelli in on this occasion? Certainly the team are expecting him, and yes, he peels into the pit lane now. So the race leader is in, so it's going to be a case of one eye to the pit lane, one eye to the track. As Rafael Giamaria in the Corvette, he's out there, he's trying to pick his way past Daniel Roos in the BMW, and Giamaria can always be relied on to be going at full throttle. So into the pits now, the race leader is the Mosler, pulls out. Slightly messy entry to the pit lane, really, for Malicelli. So he pops out. Alvaro Barber, the former World Series by Renault racer, climbs in Barber, who was 11th in last year's championship, and pending an ongoing appeals process. It's been two victories on the road this year for the voice. Mr. Martin, too, will they make it their third win of the year here at the Hungara Ring today? Jimmy Bruni is pushing hard. He is up onto the tail of the Matt Porsche trying to gain ground. There is Emanuele Moncini. He has not as yet made his pit stop. One of only a handful of cars that hasn't peeled into the pits. Daniel Zampieri is pressing on with quite a formidable pace. Moncini, who has previously raced Ferraris in the National GT Open, shares the Corvette with Diedrich Schittoff as out of the pits now comes Alvaro Barber, and he's got about two-thirds of the start and finish straights worth of an advantage over Andrea Monturbini. So that is really the gap they're going to have to watch over the remainder of the race is whether Monturbini in the Belorba course, Ferrari can close in on Alvaro Barber and the Villois Aston Martin. And if they were to come through and claim victory today, that would almost certainly put them back into the lead of the championship ahead of the AF course, Ferrari, Federico Leo, Jimmy Bruni, and the Manti Racing Porsche of Nick Tandy and Marco Holzer. So 20 two minutes and 50 seconds left in the race and it, it really feels as if it's maybe Alvaro Barber's to lose Tommy absolutely we, it was looking strong from the beginning of the race for Barber and Monicelli and Monicelli did a great job in the opening stint and Barber obviously has enough pace to keep it in the lead uh, we'll obviously watch the, the screens uh, and see what the lap times uh, for the guys behind but uh, hopefully uh, for Aston they'll be able to control the race until the end we'll see we'll see what transpires but looking at the uh, screens as well car 77 to report to race control obviously that move from Gattuso onto, onto um, number 54 um, I don't remember the name sorry it's Archie Hamilton now in the car but obviously Gattuso's move into the Porsche was very forceful looked to us uh, but we obviously we only saw the, uh, the very end of that move but the uh, race control also thinks that uh, perhaps uh, they need to look into it a bit further Yes, so uh, Lorenzo Bontempelli moves ahead of the BMW. That's now Lars Dugamo behind the wheel. And we'll find out really at the end of this lap, once all the pit stops have been completed, as to how the order has panned itself out as a result of the pit stop period and those cars that have had to serve the additional time in the pits are positioned in the race. Rafa Gia Maria, as a result of that longer pit stop and the spin from Miguel Ramos, is just having to charge up through the field. He attempts to move ahead of Alexander Taukanitsa, unsuccessful in his efforts to pass the Ferrari, the Russian driver, Alexander Taukanitsa, and he is one of the drivers who's yet to make his pit stop, and Alexander Taukanitsa Jr. has really developed as a driver this year as Gian Rios gives him assistance through the latter stages of the lap. He clearly feels he's a little bit quicker in the Corvette, but the introduction of the paddle shift gear change into the Ferrari has led to a massive improvement in Alexander Taukanitsa's form and overall pace. He now has no option but to concede to Gian Maria, who moves up the inside into turn 12. Gian Maria currently running in 20th position. Now are, we should see Taukanitsa into the pits this time as Patrick Pile is passed by Jimmy Bruni. His next target is the BMW of Lars Stugamo. And that means that Bruni is currently in 12th position. And that, Tommy, is, is the risk of this, or, the, or for the team, the challenge of this 30 seconds additional time in the pits. These cars so evenly matched anyway that he is going to have to drive very, very hard to move up through the order as he attempts to overhaul Stugamo. Stugamo not making it easy, but he slides a little bit wide through turn five. But he's got the inside line for the chicane at turn six and seven, and he squeezes through. Very little margin for error there. 
cut that one a little bit too close. He got away with it. Uh, obviously, he's uh, you know pushing hard. He knows he needs to get uh, you know go as fast as he can and get to the front. But uh, even for Bruni, I think that's a little bit of a too much of a gap really to get to the, to the very front of the field. But uh, you know he's pushing hard and he'll do the best he can. So the driver changes are now finished. We've still got a couple of the cars at the very back end of the driver change. Still in the pits, Marco Zanatini taking over from Stefano Cattuso. One of them is a, a spin for Miguel Amaral. It's been one of those weekends for the Drive X Porsche. He had a couple of spins in yesterday's race. The car sustained damage as well, so he sits a little bit prone. Here's the track as Marco holds it, sprints over the line, and all things considered, that should leave him in fourth position, chasing down the Corvette Dietrich Schittel after that fine drive from Emanuele Moncini, plus the fact that they were in the pits for some 15 seconds less than the Manti Porsche. And it is Zanatini having come out of the pits. Also, Tau Knitzer's Lorenzo Bontempelli is second in the GTS class, so he still needs to move ahead of that 77 car. So leading GTS is 77, Marco Zanatini. Second place is number 60 there. Lorenzo Bontempelli in third in the class is the BMW of Lars Dugamo. Here is Andrea Montermini, and Montermini is coming onto the tail of Alvaro Barra. It's only 1.8 seconds between, so this is the fight essentially for lead the race. It's the Villois race, Aston Martin, Alvaro Barber that leads it. Second place then, and closing on his tail is Andrea Montermini, and Montermini lost our round, Tommy, almost two seconds faster. That's right, I was just watching the screen, and it's quite a lot more pace than uh, Barber for whatever reason on the last lap, and uh, didn't look to me as Barber had uh, traffic ahead of him, so uh, at this stage of the race, Montermini definitely have a lot more pace than Barber. Well, will Andrea Montermini be able to convert that into a victory? 18 minutes remain then in the 100th race for the International GC Open. We saw a thrilling conclusion to yesterday's event, and today it promises to be very similar as well because Montermini gaining on Alvaro Barba hand over fist. He was a couple of tenths faster on that lap. So to run you down the order it is, the race being led by Alvaro Barba in the Villois Aston Martin. In second position, Andrea Montermini in the Villorba Corse Ferrari. Third place in the race is Diederik Schuttel in the Corvette. And he's being chased by the car in fourth place, Manti Racing Porsche Championship leader Marco Holzer. This is a fight a little bit lower down the top ten, and Jimmy Bruni is carving through it as we're going to see a change here for the GTS lead. Renzo Bontempelli draws the inside of Zanatini. He goes through. Jimmy Bruni also trying to gain ground, decides that discretion is the better part of valor. So Bontempelli elevating himself into the lead of the GTS class. Flashing his lights is Jimmy Bruni. Is he going to make that move into turn two? Yes, he does. So that elevates. Bruni up into eighth overall. He should be able to make the passing move Lorenzo Bontempelli as well, because those cars run in different classes, and the received wisdom is that generally a GTS car is about a second lap slower than a Super GT car. And then he's got Philip Petter and Alexander Taukanitsa not too far up ahead of him. So Bruni could, yet, yeah, Tommy, get fifth position from this race. Yeah, that would be a, a, a great result for him. He's uh, driving very well. You see in turn one, there were two cars ahead of him battling, and he quite rightly just uh, decided to step back in case there was a miss in front. Oh, Lorenzo Montempelli pointing out of the cockpit saying, go through, go past me. And that is the sign, in the case of Montempelli, of a very experienced driver. He is racing to win his class. He's not racing Jimmy Bruni. That's right. Very good move there from Montempelli, very mature. Obviously, no need to fight someone that he's not fighting in the race itself. And, uh, you know, just a wise move there from Montempelli. And Philip Petter squeezes to the inside of Alexander Taukanitsa. They almost rub up against each other. And I'm not sure that Taukanitsa saw Petter coming. Jimmy Bruni is then also going to be able to pass Taukanitsa as well. So he gains the place. What a lap this has been for Jimmy Bruni. He's made three overtaking moves. As Bontempelli also goes to the inside of Taukanitsa. And Taukanitsa squeezes him through turn 14. It's Alexander Taukanitsa senior behind the wheel. And generally a little bit slower than his son. As Patrick Pile also looking to gain ground as he moves to the inside of Marco Zanatini and moves ahead into turn one, as does Bontempelli. He climbs up ahead of Alexander Taukanitsa and it's all goes so much overtaking. And it means that Bruni is already up into six. He's chasing Filippetta. This is the fight for seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. And in the meantime, Bontempelli nearly a second passer than Barber on the last lap. He must be very close to his backhand at this stage. 
between the two leaders, by the way, is just eight tenths of a second. And Zanatini slips low down the order. We wait for the leaders to come into shot. Here they come. And there isn't a lot between them. It's there. So Alvaro Barber being chased down by Andrea Montermini. Both drivers looking for their third victory of the season on the road. Both drivers, however, have got their victories from Paul Ricard hanging over them. That is going to be adjudicated next week. But Montermini closing up on Alvaro Barber. But this is going to be the section of the circuit that Barber relishes. He can use the power of the Aston Martin, maybe just to pull a couple of car lengths clear of Montermini along the start and finish straight. And then it comes down to just how cold Montermini's feeling into turn one. Well, he needed to speed, obviously. I, I don't think it's quite close enough to get a slipstream there, especially with the Aston Martin. I think uh, Montemini will have to wait until he gets into sector two. Again, preferably out of turn five. That's the exit that he wants uh, to try and get him into the chicane. Uh, we'll see what happens on this lap. He'll also just be trying to pressurise Alvaro Barber into making an error. But at the moment, Barber is doing everything that he needs to. Montemini, though, taking a tight entry into turn two. This is a particular section of the circuit where Montermini may have fancied his chances of getting through, but now out of turn three, onto turn four, no way through there. But then, as you've been saying all weekend, Tommy, it's it's the run through turn five to get the inside line for the chicane at six and seven. That's really what Montermini's going to be looking to do this time around. Let's see if he can do it. So around the long right-hander at turn five, they come, but no Alvaro Barber's got enough in his pocket on this occasion, so Montermini has no option but to inspect in great detail the rear wing of the Villeroy's Racing Aston Martin. Into turn eight, they come. That section of the circuit is where Montermini so quick as we have a spin from Alexander Tamkinitsa. Around he goes, that plummets him down the order into 13th. So towards the end of lap 20 of this race, 13 minutes remaining. And are we going to see Tommy repeat of yesterday's race for the car, a Ferrari, that's a little bit quicker than the race leader, struggling to find a way through? Well, it's beginning to look that way a little bit, because Montemini did get close to Barber, but then Barber pulled away. And uh, Barber is very wise to uh, the points on the circuit where he knows the Ferrari is stronger. So, uh, as you can see, they're coming into turn five in the last lap. Barber actually pushed quite hard because he knew that was a position for the Ferrari to, to come through. So, uh, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure. Philip Petter is also not going to make it easy for Jimmy Bruni to come through. Bruni lurks ominously on his tail. This is the fight for fifth and sixth. And Philip Petter, like Jimmy Bruni, has been racing Ferraris for many, many years. He was the GTS champion of the GT Open back in 2009. He was 15th in last year's championship, Philip Petter. But he has had already a race victory this year. That was at Brands Hatch, so back to the fight for the leaders, Alvaro Barber and Andrea Montermini. And we've got a 20-second penalty being applied to Philip Petter. So Philip Petter gets a 20-second penalty for a pit stop infringement. We've also got drive-through penalties as running wide is Jimmy Bruni trying to get past Philip Petter. We've also got drive-through penalties as well for Eraj Alexander in car 51 and the 53 car of Cesar Ramos, the Brazilian rookie driver. So they're not really featuring in the battles at the head of each class, but this fight for the lead is so tight. Now, something that I was thinking about overnight, Tommy, we've been talking a lot about one of the real qualities of the International GT Open is that the, the handicapping is for pit stop time, which means the characteristics of the cars really come to the fore. Now, the Aston Martin, we know, is good in a straight line. We know the Porsche has got the traction and the torque through the corners. The Ferrari, all things being equal, has probably been the, the best package this weekend, but actually it's not been a standout performer at any particular section of the circuit, which is maybe why we're seeing Federico there yesterday and Andrea Montermini today struggling to make those overtaking moves. Absolutely. It, it, it's a very balanced field when you look at it. But yes, each car has advantages in different places. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, with the tyres being the same for everybody, that creates a, a, you know, a very, very even sort of uh, competition. Uh, very impressed, though, with the Aston Martin, because it, although it does have straight line advantage, it also moves around the corners very well, very well indeed. And we saw earlier on there, Jimmy Bruni just start breaking himself into turn one, and Philip Peter just be taking the lead. Oh, oh, what a move. Sorry, Tommy, up the inside there from Jimmy Bruni. He moves in to fifth position. I'm sure we'll see a replay that of that momentarily really brave driving from Jimmy Bruni. Now the other gap 
that is coming down hand over fist is the fight for third position because Marco Holzer is closing in on Deirdre Chitov in the Chevrolet Corvette to the tune of two seconds lap as well. So the podium places are all very much to play for as we move into the final bit of the race. Just 10 minutes remaining here at the Hungaro ring in what has been an absolutely wonderful weekend's racing from the Usasha GT Open. The best possible style to celebrate the 100th race for the championship. But who is going to be the victor in that 100th race? We have got then the Aston Martin, Alvaro Barber leading the way from the Valorba course, Ferrari, Vandroma and Termini. Here is the Jimmy Bruni move. Yeah, I, I think Philip actually, I knew that was going to happen. He actually helped him out. He may even be going, did he go in the pits this time? Let's have a look from Philip Peter, because he knows he has to serve a penalty. Perhaps he didn't, but uh, it wasn't exactly difficult for Bruni to get through that. Well, I think it's going to be a lot harder, though, for Andrea Montermini to try the same move, isn't it, into turn 13? Well, around turn 12, they come now into that corner, and Montermini certainly showing himself to Alvaro Barber to the inside, but he's not really quite close enough on this occasion. So they climb up the hill out of turn 13 to the final turn of the circuit. Such an iconic corner this Hungaroring, so used to seeing the likes of Senna and Frost going around there in photos back from the 19th. 80s as Edward waving their man on. And is that as much for the, the psychological boost for the team as anything? I'm not sure Montoni will see the team waving him on there. Well, you know, as, as drivers, when we see signs like that on the pit wall, we, you know, we feel like saying, listen, I am trying as hard as I can, you know, I can't go any faster. And I'm sure Montemini is doing the best he can at the moment. But, you know, Bob has got the answer at the moment. He's uh, matching lap times within a tenth of each other. And, uh, and you know, the, the, the sort of famous turn five, I don't see an advantage there for Montemini in turn five, which is really uh, disappointing. Uh, the Aston Martin is able to carry a lot of speed on the entry to turn five, you know, negating any any sort of opportunity for Montemini. I think the other thing to mention, though, is that in the second race yesterday, we saw the tyres on the Aston Martin just fall off a cliff during the latter stage of the race, and so Alvaro Barbary can't over-push that car. The single compound of the tyres, it really does balance out very nicely between the teams, the Dunlop tyre. It, it gives us some very lively race, and they come up to the motor, Rafael Unzarazaga, experienced driver Rafael, so he moves aside, lets the leading battle come through. Unimpeded Marco Holzer, by the way, is within one and a half seconds of Diederik Schittoff in the fight for third position, and in the GTS class, it's Lorenzo Bontepelli who leads it from Daniel Zampieri and Marco Zanatini. That brings us up to date with Places as Montermini slides the rear of the car. He is pushing so hard to try and move up ahead of Alvaro Barber. He is certainly pushing very hard. And I also, ahead of him, you can see that Barber is also struggling a little bit with his tyres now. And I think that's kind of spurred him on. And uh, they stepped over the mark a little bit there, Montermini. But uh, it's certainly very close at the front. And now they're also coming up to a little bit of traffic. Their next target is going to be Erad Alexander. Here is the fight for third position we were mentioning. Uh, Marco Holzer in the Manti Racing Porsche right up onto Sergio Dirichito and after yesterday's race Olaf Mantai the team principal just pulled a crate of beer out of the team's truck and said that was phenomenal to get through to third place and they said today is going to be so much harder to get on the podium and now Marco Holzer is within touching distance of achieving that result for the Porsche team and again with a night towards the championship it keeps them very firmly in touch with Alvaro Barber who was thick stat him Matteo Malicelli should move into the lead of the championship it's a great performance by the Monte car. Again, clearly uh, the Porsche hasn't got the legs on the rest of the, uh, the, the other marks uh, in the field at the moment. And uh, really great job from both drivers, Jose and Tandy. And again, really, uh, really enjoyed watching uh, Nick Tandy uh, yesterday. And, uh, that move uh, on the last lap was really uh, very good. And uh, hopefully uh, they'll get a good result. They really deserve a good result uh, from this race. Clearly, again, not driving the best car in the field. Right, here we are. Is this turn five? No, not quite yet. But Marco Holzer is right on the tail of Diego Schiff. We don't know where to look because we've got these two battles. So into turn four. Now they come on to the famous turn five. Are we going to see the setup from Holzer? Because anything that Nick Tandy can do, I'm sure that Marco Holzer feels that he can equal. Oh, and Schiff just wiggles the Corvette, but he plants his right foot, gives it enough of of a spurt into six and seven and just maybe Marco Holzer knows if he stays in the wheel tracks of the Corvette that there will be an error from the Dutch driver and he can pounce on Termini though he's much much close to the tail of Alvaro Barber he hasn't been any stage is he close enough to force the issue up the inside line into the penultimate corner on the lap no he's not we've got five and a half minutes remaining and it's another nail-biting finish 
but can Alvaro Barba do a Miguel Ramos and hold on for the remainder of the race after the most intense pressure from Andrea Montermini? They come through and are about to complete lap 24. What about Marco Holzer? Can he fight his way through into turn 13? He's very, very close to the Corvette. He jinks to the inside, but covering the line was Diedrich Schiff. He then runs wide and Holzer sees the gap and the Corvette tries to close the door of Beard a little bit belatedly. Holzer, though, has got the wrong track position. He's to the outside line into the final turn and there's nothing doing there. And then for a pitch way, there are cars trying to squeeze through as it's now Montermini's turn. Oh, and he makes contact with Alvaro Barber into turn two. Barber, though, keeps the car in the right direction. And Montermini unable to squeeze through. But Montermini, he's got to be careful because in the second race at Paul Ricard, he made contact with Miguel Ramos to take the lead of the race. He doesn't want to do the same thing. Absolutely. Montermini was actually very lucky that uh, the Aston actually kept, uh, kept it together. Had the Aston gone for a spin, then uh, he would have uh, quite uh, quite possibly uh, faced a penalty there. So uh, lost a bit of time as well. Look at the gap now. The Aston Martin's got a bit of an edge. Uh, Montemini needs to be a bit more patient and uh, pick his moment a little bit more wisely. Well, will Marco Holzer pick his moment wisely? Has there arrived into turn four and he's in the wheel tracks of the Corvette. Good. Turn five could give him the opportunity, but this is solid defensive drive from Diedrich Schittoff. He is just stopping the Corvette mid-corner. He's really preventing Marco Holzer to carry through the corner speed that he'd like to. And as a result, Holzer can't draw alongside as they jink through turns five and six, but then running a little bit wide on the exit of turn seven was Diedrich Schittoff into turn eight. That's where Nick Tandy made the move on the last lap yesterday. Marco Holzer again wasn't quite close enough as we see the replay. And yeah, that really, Montermini, if, as you say, if Alvaro Barber had spun there, I don't think he'd have been able to defend that one. I don't think he would have got away with that one. I think Montermini, what he did is he made a move. He was already committed to that move uh, and didn't really count for the fact that uh, perhaps uh, Barber would have uh, blocked that and uh, nearly came and stuck there. So uh, very lucky for Montermini, I would say. And snatching his brakes is Marco Holzer as he crawls all over the tail of the Corvette. We've just got two laps remaining in this race. We're into the penultimate lap. So who is it who is going to win the race? And who is it who is going to be in third position? You could also still say that this group could end up winning the race. Such is the frosty of the fight at the head of the field. So three minutes remaining and the Corvette should be able to move away from the Porsche along the start and finish rate. That's exactly what he does. And Jimmy Bruni is closing on their tail as well. Bruni's only two seconds back and he's three seconds a lap faster than this fight for third position. We could yet see Bruni on the podium. We caught a glimpse of him at the back of the shot and it means the holes has got to find a way through. As Shitov covers the inside line into turn two, no way through there for Marco Holzer, who is getting increasingly frustrated, staring at the rear spoiler of that Corvette. He then jinks to the inside, oh, so close through turn four, but no way through. Andrea Montermini, meanwhile, continues to stalk the race leader, Alvaro Barber. And what we thought yesterday's race was spectacular, this race is equally close, Barber slides the car. And he is rapidly running out of tyres. They're coming onto the tail of the Virag Alexander as well to put a lap on him. So that could just provide the opening on Termini needs. And there is Barber flashing his light furiously. Get out of my way. And this could really change the order. And Barber has been slowed up quite badly through turn 12. On Termini, though, he's not near enough. And Genny closes right up to the tail of the Aston Martin on the brakes into turn 13. We've got one minute and 50 seconds left in the race. So this is going to be to start the final lap. And it's three cars now for third position. But still, Deirdre Chitov holds on in that third place. He's been chased all the while by Marco Holzer. And now Jimmy Bruni is trying to thrust his way through and gain the position as well. And we have got such an exciting battle for third and Holzer is going to have to make a move soon because Jimmy Bruni attempts to find traction around the outside line to power past Marco Holzer but now Bruni will feel confident that he's got a little bit more straight line advantage along the start and finish straight towards turn one into turn two for the final time come the race leaders it's still though Alvaro Barb for Andrea Montermini nothing between them and Montermini tries every which way to try and force the error from Alvaro Barber trying to find a way through but Barber doesn't concede anything into turn one and Bruni around the outside of Marco Holzer Holzer tries to keep his line to the inside and he should hold on Bruni though finds the traction on the outside he's got the inside line towards turn two and Marco Holzer and Jimmy Bruni they've got pre Previous from earlier in the year when Bruni tangled with Holzer at the Nervo ring, but he finally goes through up into that fourth position. Holzer will be so frustrated having challenged for third for so many laps to now being shuffled down into fifth. So it's Jimmy Bruni's turn to pull off what would be a remarkable podium finish as into the latter stages of the final lap. 
become the leading duo. It is Alvaro Barba still in the Villois. Aston Martin who leads from Andrea Montermini. We've got just three corners remaining. Now can Montermini do it? He closes on to the Aston Martin as they power down the back straight into turn 12. He looks to the inside. He forces Barber to commit to the defensive line. Barber's very slow to return 12. This could be Montermini's moment, but Barber's got the inside line into the penultimate turn. So around the outside goes Andrea Montermini. Can he find the traction on the exit? No, he can't. Barber covers the line. Montermini thinks about forcing the issue up the inside into the last corner, but he can't do it. And it's going to be a remarkable victory for Alvaro Barber, provided he can exit the last corner cleanly, which he does. And Alvaro Barber and Matteo Malicelli play in victory in the 12th race of the season, the International GT Open, just for Andrea Montermini and Juan Manuel Lopez in second position. But what about third? And this could be a stunning drive from Diedrich Schittoff if he could maintain that third place, although he's got Jimmy Bruni right up on his tail. They come through the final turn, and the Corvette may just have the legs on the Ferrari here, and it is going to be third position for Emanuele Moncini, and Diedrich Schittoff with fourth for Jimmy Bruni and Federico Leo, and fifth goes the way of Marco Holzer and Nick Tandy. And, well, yesterday, Tommy, we saw an exciting end to the race, but today was the measure of that. That was absolutely fantastic. Well, yeah, it's another cracking race, and uh, we thought we've, we've seen it all yesterday, but uh, these guys really provided us with a lot of excitement. What a great drive from Jimmy Bruni. I mean, uh, you know, with the 30-second deficit in the pits, coming all the way back uh, to finish a very, very strong fourth, nearly, nearly third. So, uh, great performance there. Delighted with the Villois. Aston Martin team there is Matteo Malicelli. And when they look back at the raw statistics of this race, they have pole position, they led every lap of the way, but that doesn't tell the story, does it? Here in Alvaro Barber then, their third win on the road in the 2012 Championship, and what a way for the International GT Open to celebrate its 100th race. One of the finest races of the year, certainly, and what has been a spectacular weekend's race in the GTS class, by the way. It was Lorenzo Bontempelli who won it from Daniel Zampieri and Michael Dallastella with Marco Zanatini and Stefano Cattuso completing the podium after a very hard-fought race. And, and the marshals, quite rightly, right to the edge of the track to cheer on these drivers as we take a look at Marco Holzer giving a little bit of assistance to Jimmy Bruni through the chicane on that final lap. And just so many standout drives from this race, Tommy because we saw Alvaro Barber defending briefly. Diedrich Schittoff was waiting on the Corvette. That is a Le difficult car to defend. Very much so. Great performances by you know, everybody, really, at the front, uh, especially. Uh, top four, top five uh, uh, driving very, very well. Great standard of driving the whole series. So let's take a look then at the final classification with the win for Alvaro Barber and Matteo Malicelli. Second place, Andrea Montermini and Juan Manuel Lopez. Third place, Diedrich Schittoff and Emanuele Moncini. Jimmy Bruni and Federico Lea are fighting fourth. And the same for Marco Holzer and Nick Handy in fifth. Ramon the Rack and Patrick Pile, they did come through to sixth. And then Lorenzo Bontempelli single handedly winning the GTS class from Daniel Zampieri and Michael Dallas Stella. Again, a lap, a race with very, very few casualties. Fastest lap, perhaps unsurprisingly, going the way of Jimmy Bruni, which he did five laps from the chequered flag. So, in terms of the drivers' championship, well, it is Barbara Malicelli who move into the lead by eight points from Marco Holzer and Nick Tandy. Then Leo and Bruni just a point back with Montermini and Lopez driving themselves into contention. They're only 23 points adrift of the lead. We've got four races to come in the 2012 season and will next be in action at Monza in three weeks' time. It's the last weekend of September and that is the 29th and 30th of September. You'll be able to watch the racing live and in HD on the GT Open web stream, www.live.gtopen.net. And then the season concludes at Barcelona on the 3rd and 4th of November. So here are the race winners, Alvaro Barber and Michelle Malicelli. And the Villois squad, they've worked so hard this weekend. They were, we saw them after qualifying for this race yesterday, Tommy. They were a little bit concerned about the car's pace through the race, and they were right to be concerned, but Alvaro Barber showed why he is rapidly becoming one of the most trusted GT racers out there.
a, a formidable defensive drive. Great performance by the whole team and um, obviously looking after their tyres very well throughout the, uh, the entire race, which obviously was a concern to them, but uh, clearly their pace was there at the end. Uh, a little disappointing for me uh, today, really from Montemini, looking at his best lap time, only a couple of tenths away from Jimmy Bruni's fastest time. So clearly they had the car to challenge Barber and they did challenge, but couldn't quite get through. Andrea Montemini tried everything. He almost overstepped the limit as well. And they may see it as one that got away. They'll also see it as a race where Andrea Montemini offered everything. He, he looks absolutely shattered there, doesn't he? Caked in sweat. And he was clearly working very, very hard behind the wheel because it's it's been a warm day here at Hungar Ring. It's hot in the cockpits and the physical exertion required to, to race to that sort of pace is quite something. With Alvaro Barber, it looks like he's barely broken sweat. The technical information we have found the briefcase of Mr. Vincent Barrow. We have found the briefcase of Mr. Vincent Barrow. Uh, 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 great, great effort. Uh, but again, uh, I think uh, the top five, top six guys today all showed an incredibly high standard. And, uh, well, let's have a look at the highlights of the race, which was almost really the whole 50 minutes. It was very, very tight into the first corner, and Matteo Malicelli held his nerve as Jimmy Bruni and Emanuele Moncini tried to squeeze through. But once Malicelli had got the advantage, he pulled away. It was Federico Leo, of course, who started the Ferrari. Moncini then made that error, which promoted Nick Tandy up into third position, that leading trio of Malicelli. Leo and Tandy fought all the way as Martin Lansing was an unfortunate early casualty. And the race one with it, Miguel Ramos also having a scary moment, although it was equally scary for Andrea Rizzoli, he was confronted by a sideways Corvette. Daniel Roos, but in the star drive in the Schubert Motorsport BMW Z4, we certainly look forward to seeing more of that car at Monza and in Barcelona as the fight in the GTS class was equally as close as the one in the Super GT class. This was the battle between Andrea Rizzoli and Michael Dallastella as they also tried to prize their way past Ram on the rack. So we hit the big window and it was an extra 30 seconds in the pits. Federico Leo and Jimmy Bruni. Bruni hopped in as Stefano Cattuso elbowed his way into the lead of the GTS class. Marco Mapelli was slithering across the gravel trap. So the race leader was in. Matteo Malicelli hands over to Alvaro Barber as Rafael Giamaria put together a storming drive up through the field, eventually bringing that car home in 12th position. Difficult weekend, though, for the Drivex Porsche. Spin for Miguel Amaral and an early retirement for them. Jimmy Bruni then did what Jimmy Bruni does best, surged up through the field, overtook three cars on one lap at the start of his stint. So we moved later into the race, Andrea Montemini closed onto the tail of Alvaro Barber, but it was Alvaro Barber who withstood the pressure and came through to claim his third victory of what has been a wonderful season for the International GT Open and what has been a super 100 races and all credit to Jesus Pereira and his very, very hard-working team for all the work that they have done to establish the International GT Open as such a popular and exciting championship. This is the beauty of this championship, Tommy. Three different marks on, on the roster. Absolutely great to see that. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, so often you see uh, a certain mark uh, uh, leading a championship, or, uh, dominating a, a series. And it, it's, uh, again, as you say, credit to Jesus Barre and his team for creating a championship where all the marks can really run at the front. Uh, clearly, their system of handicap in the pits works very, very well. Uh, it may, you know, maybe some people will get frustrated by it. Obviously, uh, of course, uh, you know, some people.
by saying that the Arsenal is too weak down the straight. Uh, and uh, the Porsche obviously perhaps not going as well as they could do. But uh, anyway, it's a, it's a good balance field. It's wonderful there to see Hazers Pereira presenting oh, well, the trophies the to the, the winning drivers on, on the podium. Uh, well, there's a very special weekend for the International GT Open. There's been lots of celebrations. I suspect the celebrations are going to go on long into the night. So um, delighted drivers on the podium. And, and this is why people like yourself, Tommy, go boat racing, because on a day like today, the sun's out, and they had immense fun and gave us such entertainment. Yeah, great, great racing, uh, both races. We did this at the end today, absolutely high standard of driving. Uh, I can't wait for Monza, really. There'll be a cracking race, different, completely different type of track. But uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, the future looks bright, I think, for this series. Uh, certainly, I think the... Uh, the, uh, the best uh, grid in terms of GT2, GT3 cars that I can see in Europe or, or elsewhere. I completely agree. It really is a, a wonderful championship and one that has had its first visit to the Hungara Ring as an astonishing success. We've seen two utterly brilliant races over the course of this weekend and I'm sure that Monza in three weeks time will be equally entertaining as we enjoy seeing some of these cars running in super slow motion as it's time now for the GTS podium and first of all third is Stefano Gattuso and Marco Zanatini and Gattuso well a word about him because he, his performance at the first half of the race for something he's not not being the championship all year absolutely brilliant Daniel Zampieri and Michael Dallastella an excellent second and then Lorenzo Bontempelli single-handedly taking the car to the class victory he is overjoyed with that uh, so he should be great great effort and uh, he still has enough energy to jump, jump as high as he did just there on the podium and uh, yes yeah, a great a great drive for Bontempi and uh, going to his uh, his home race next uh, full of uh, full of confidence yeah, Lorenzo Bontempelli one of the, the most effervescent and popular characters in the paddock as well he, he utterly adores his racing and he will be uh, grinning all the way back home to Italy tonight after that performance. Yes, handshake and the trophy from Hazes Pereira and also from the racing as well. A very fine performance. They get the trophy and then it's time for them to reach for the champagne. So it's going to be a short pause for the International GT Open, which will reconvene at Monza on the last weekend of September, where we will be in for, I'm sure, some very, very close and entertaining racing there. Very, very different characteristics on the 29th and 30th of September at Monza. Join us live on www.live.gtopen.net then. But from Tommy Erdos and myself, Ben Evans, here at the Hungaro Ring, it's time to say goodbye, and we look forward to seeing you a couple weeks at Monza.